In this short video, I'm going to introduce you to D'Alembert's principle if you're not already familiar with it. D'Alembert's principle is really nothing more than a bookkeeping device, so you don't have to keep writing out Newton's second law. And you can just refer to the product of mass and acceleration as an inertial force. But it seems to confuse a lot of people or be considered an unnecessary step or two. Conceptually, it will aid you in keeping track of all the forces that are involved in a particular movement. So let's get to it. How much force is actually required to move, say, a barbell or a dumbbell? Well, let's just say on that barbell or dumbbell, we have two forces that are acting on it. We have the force of gravity, which is acting in the downward direction, and we have the force that your body is producing on that barbell or dumbbell. We know that the sum of the forces is going to equal the mass times the acceleration. That vector of the mass times the acceleration is the effective force. So we have an effective force. A force equal and opposite to that effective force is referred to as the inertial force. And in this condition here, you can see that if we add the effective force to the inertial force, then the sum of the forces is going to be zero. If that's the case, we can then solve many dynamic problems as if they were static problems. Now we have the sum of the force vector, and that sum of the force vector can go in any direction, and we call that the effective force. And then a force equal and opposite in direction to that, regardless of what that direction may be, is our inertial force. So again, the sum of all the force vectors determines the effective force, and an equal and opposite force is called the inertial force. Now, D'Alembert's principle says that the sum of all of these forces is going to be equal to zero. So on the left here, you see that if we put all of the vectors together, tip to tail, the force that the body is exerting on a barbell, the force due to gravity, and the inertial force, they create a closed vector, and therefore the sum of all those vectors is going to be zero. So now what we can do is if we move the force of the body to the other side of the equation sign, then we would reverse the signs of the force due to gravity and the inertial force, and would see that the force that the body has to produce on that barbell or dumbbell is going to be a force equal in magnitude in opposite direction to the force due to gravity and the inertial force. Another way in which we can think about that is consider the barbell. The sum of the forces acting on the barbell is going to be equal to its mass times its acceleration. And we already said that this is going to be the inertial force. Well, then the forces that we have acting in the downward direction are going to be the inertial force and the force due to gravity. These forces together are going to create an external force that will be acting on our body. And therefore, our body has to produce a force that is going to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to this external force. A little more conceptually, let's say we're laying on the ground and we're trying to push up a medicine ball. Well, again, the sum of all the forces acting on that medicine ball is going to equal the mass times the acceleration. Therefore, if we think of the forces that are acting on our hand, those forces that we have to produce equal in magnitude and opposite in direction are going to be equal to the inertial force plus that force due to gravity. All right, so now let's take a look at the math. We know that the sum of the forces is going to equal the effective force. In this particular case, we have the force of the body, and that is the force the body is producing on that barbell, plus the force due to gravity. Now, I want to stop and caution you here for a second to think about that sign for the force due to gravity. In this case, it's positive because I am going to denote the negative value in my inputs. Now, once again, we know the effective force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The inertial force, then, is going to be equal a negative 1 times the mass times the acceleration. D'Alembert's principle tells us the force of the body on the barbell 
plus the force due to gravity of the barbell plus the inertial force is all going to be equal to zero. Finally, we can say the force the body has to produce on that barbell or dumbbell is going to be negative one times the force due to gravity plus the inertial force. You will notice that D'Alembert's principle requires an extra couple of steps and may not seem like it's worth it. But things could get messy with Newton's second law if you have a lot of terms, and sometimes it's easier, both conceptually and mathematically, to use the concept of an inertial force. One word of caution, do not mix the methods. Do not include the inertial term as both the sum of the forces and then say the sum is equal to the mass times the acceleration. You have included the term twice. And there you have an overview of D'Alembert's principle. I think after you work with it for a while, you'll find that it's very useful.